Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. So I was having a conversation with someone relatively recently uh, about being a saint and uh, about how it seems like really, really hard to be a saint. They were saying, that, I know they know the stories, I know the story, you probably know the stories, a bunch of saints that seem to live really incredibly extreme lives. Like they didn't have normal prayer. They had like inc extreme prayer. They didn't have normal fasts. They had extreme fasts. They didn't just normally serve it kind of just your day to day, here we are, you know, getting up and getting the kids ready for school and getting to work. Like they seem to have a, they seem to have really incredibly extreme lives. And the question that came back was, do I have to, in order to be a saint, do I have to have that same extremity, <laughs> extremeness, <laughs> extremosity? Do I have to be that extreme as well? It's a really good question, I think. Because I think being a saint can seem so out of reach in this day and age, particularly when we compare it to other days and other ages. And yet, it's always possible. It's always possible to be a saint. Quick clarification, what's a saint? I think we have a video about that as well. So you can just, we can link it or um, you just look it up. I mean, you have Google, come on. Um, but essentially what we're talking about is someone who makes it to heaven. A saint is anyone who's in heaven, not necessarily someone with a capital S, T, period in front of their name, but like anybody who makes, anyone who makes it to heaven. But I think there are three obstacles, or three, uh, yeah, three obstacles that every person in this day and age has to encounter and overcome in order to be a saint. Now, obviously, it's due to God's grace, right? This is, this is very, very important that we understand this, that no one muscles their way to heaven. No one white knuckles their way to heaven. No one takes heaven for themselves. No one earns heaven. We, that's, I, that should go without saying, but I need to say it because I think there's some people who will think like, oh, then I have to do it myself. Or they'll think, oh, those typical Catholics, they think they're doing it themselves. Absolutely not. Like God's grace must be active in our lives and without it, we got nothing. <laughs> like we have nothing. So it's actually, it's all God's grace but we cooperate with God's grace. And that's what I'm saying is we have to cooperate with God's grace in many ways, but I'm gonna narrow it down, nail it down, focus on three ways. Okay, here's three obstacles that we experience in our day and age. One, we're so accustomed to things being instant. We get instant gratification all across the board. Amazon now has, as you know this already, they now have uh, buildings in some of the major cities so you can order something on Amazon and then within two hours, it's at your house. Like, so we have this, Culture, we've created, a, not just culture, that culture has then shaped our hearts. And now we don't just have a culture of instant gratification, we have hearts that long for instant gratification. Not just long for, to long for something would be big. We just, we want it. We want instant gratification. And yet, to be sanctified, the process of becoming more and more like Christ is just that, it's a process. I don't like process. Our hearts are now conformed to instant gratification and yet, Becoming a saint is a process that will go through many, many days and many, many years. Now, yes, are there people who, um, with like in a flash of God's grace, seem to like be instantly changed? Yes. In fact, there are moments in many people's lives where that kind of thing happens. For most of us, however, the process of sanctification is just that. It is a process. And so what do we need to do? We need to resist the temptation to instant gratification and we need to, here's the phrase, learn to love the process. Um, we, had a, we had an athlete here on campus who, um, he said one of his coaches used to always say that, like every practice, learn to love the process. That you're not going to instantly become an incredible athlete. You have to, it's going to be a, it's going to be a lengthy and often difficult process. And so you can resist it. You can say, I wish it was already done. I wish I was that athlete I wanted to be. Or you could say like this, I wish I was that saint that God wants me to be. You have to learn to love the process. And that process is going to involve, going to involve dryness. It's going to involve distraction. It's going to involve difficulty. That process also is also going to involve joy and, and um, consolation. It's going to involve a lot of things. But you have to, we have to learn to love the process and resist instant gratification. Number two, our culture and then that, therefore our hearts have been formed in a certain way where, how would I say this? We like keeping our options open. I mean, we, we, we have a culture of non-committal, non-committedness, lack of commitment. We have a lack of commitment. Again, I could point to culture, but it always comes back to our own individual hearts. And our own individual hearts in this kind of culture really, really does not do well with commitment. 
So we have a, pro a problem and that problem is I don't want to fully give myself to anything or anyone because I want to keep my options open. It was a, I remember a buddy of mine calling it optionitis. We have optionitis and we like our options. And so if I make a decision, if I commit to something or someone, then now I don't have as many options. And so I don't like that as much. And yet, what is it, what is it to be a saint? Is to say, Jesus, you and none other. God, your will and not mine. It's to say, um, I have done with all the other options. Lord, I am wholly and fully yours. I'm completely yours. I mean, that's, that's ultimately what this is. When it comes to being a saint, is it's going to cost you everything. Why? Because being a saint is this. I mean, Father Benedict Rochelle once said, uh, a saint is someone who says yes to God and then just never stops saying yes. A saint is someone who says yes to God and just never stops saying yes. So again, doing penances, doing all those prayers, all those kind of things, those extreme things, if God is calling a person to that, yes, that's what they should do. Ultimately, though, a saint is simply someone who has conformed their will to the Father's will. That's it. They've conformed their will to the Father's will, which means I can't keep my options open. It's, it's that, that sense of saying, I, commit to, I committed myself to the Lord. His grace is present. His grace is active. And I will recommit myself to the Lord and recommit myself to the Lord. And when I fall, I will recommit myself to the Lord because he's constantly calling you. He's constantly calling me to recommit ourselves wholly and fully to the Lord. This process, this thing is so unusual and it's so uh, rare because it will cost you less, it, it will cost you nothing less than everything. To become a saint will cost you nothing less than everything. And that's the third thing. Okay, first thing is we have this instantaneous stuff we like. Second thing is we have a, a optionitis. The third issue is um, we lack a fighting spirit. Our culture, we lack a fighting spirit. We think like, no, I mean, just that sense of like, you just kind of grow into the thing and um, you don't want to be too extra, you know? You don't want to be too over the top, you know? You don't want to be, um, I mean, why cause a ruckus when everyone around us is kind of like, you know, mooing, chewing on the cud, you know? buying like sheep. A saint is someone who's going to say, no, I have a fighting spirit. I have a warrior spirit. Every, there's no saint who ever lived who didn't have a warrior spirit, who didn't have a fighting spirit, who didn't have what you call courage. And courage is that sense of like, okay, I can discipline myself. I can say no to myself. I can say yes to God's grace. I can say yes to serving another person. I can say no to when another person wants to walk away from the Lord or walk to take me away from the Lord. The willingness to fight, it seems like so few of us have this right now. So few of us have this fighting spirit, this warrior spirit, because we think that maybe Satan has, has uh, like made a truce <laughs> with us. We don't realize we're still in a battle. But the saints are the ones who realize, no, this is a process. I'm going to love the process. That it involves a whole full commitment to, I belong to the Father. And he, I'm, I'm, I am my beloved. My beloved is mine. That whole commitment to do the, doing the Father's will. And thirdly, this fighting spirit, this warrior spirit. I remember someone once saying this. It just was so powerful and it struck me to the core. They said, actually, all these options, all these reasons why um, I'm not a saint yet. He said, there's only one reason you're not a saint yet. Because you don't fully want to be. There's only one reason I'm not a saint yet, you guys. It's because I don't fully want to be. Why? Because God's grace in a, is overabundant. Christ's work is sufficient. His Holy Spirit has been given to us through his church. I have access to all of the grace that I possibly would need to be the saint of God, the saint that he wants me to be. I don't choose it. There's only one reason you're not a saint, because you don't want to be. You haven't chosen it yet. Let that not discourage you, because the grace is still absolutely accessible. The Father's heart is completely accessible. We just need to fight these battles. We need these three things. We need to love the process. We need to commit fully to he's, I'm his. And we need that warrior spirit, that fighting spirit. You can do it because he gives us the power and the grace and the spirit to do it. For all of us here to says presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless. Smash the like button, comment below, subscribe, share it with your friends, throw a party, eat tacos, I don't know. <laughs>